Uh, let's talk now to Tom Pope, who's with me, Deputy Chief Economist at the Institute for Government. Tom, nice to see you. Um, look, there's some unwelcome reading in all of this because growth, uh, and let's talk about economic growth right now, the OBR downgrading forecast for what happens next. Um, it's hard to see at this point where the growth comes from. We know the cost of living crisis is, is, is keeping you know, us from going out and spending and shopping and buying and consuming. Businesses nervous about investing because their costs have gone up as well. Where will the growth come from? Yeah, and of course, that, that's a difficult question. That's really the one the Chancellor was trying to answer today. And he went quite big on saying that this was a budget to try to deliver growth. And his answer was, one, well, we need to get more business investment. The, you know, the record on business investment in the UK since the financial crisis is dreadful. It's lower than lots of other countries. And if you don't have you know, good capital, good machines, good equipment for workers to use, that, that's going to affect your productivity. And low productivity has been a real problem in, in the last 15 years and continues to be. So, so that, that's one way. I mean, he, he also focused a little bit on, on skills, or he at least mentioned that, although there wasn't too much there. I think the truth with growth is that there's no quick fix. There's nothing that a politician can do that sort of snap your fingers and tomorrow we're back to the 2% a year of growth that we were having before the financial crisis. What's needed is long-term changes that over time will build the capital stock, build the skills in the country. So the, the move on business investment was welcomed from the Chancellor. But I think the bit that was missing a bit today was the public sector. He focused a lot on driving private sector growth. And he even said, by allowing businesses to invest more, that will boost productivity. At the same time, his numbers penciled in for public investment, and for that to fall quite dramatically over the next few years. And the public sector is an increasing size of the economy, as has been well discussed. And that's going to be an increasingly important part of the growth picture as well. Uh, and just to explain, if people aren't really sure how that capital investment issue will work, so essentially what the government is saying is every pound that you spend on equipment, maybe that's IT, maybe plants, uh, machines, Machinery, that sort of thing, you'll get a 25 uh, pence back uh, in a tax credit, assuming that you pay um, corporation tax. How does that work in practice? What will people be thinking right now about how they would benefit yeah. from this? So the, the, main, the main way that it's working now is that what used to happen was that you would pay a pound, or at least a few years ago, you'd pay a pound and mm -hmm. you'd be able to deduct, deduct 40p this year, maybe 20p the year after, 20p, 20p. Eventually, you'd be able to deduct, deduct that full pound, but over quite a long period of time. Yeah. And because of inflation, uh, by that time, that's sort of worth quite a lot less to you than if you could deduct it all up front. The change now is that you invest a pound today, you deduct a pound from your profits. So, so that reduces the amount of tax you pay today. So that's an incentive for businesses to invest rather than maybe save that money or, or spend it on day-to-day on -day things that, that might not boost the productive capacity of the company. If you're spending more on that plant and equipment, you have may, maybe that means the company decides it's worth spending more on, on better computers, for example, so you can do your work uh, more effectively, or, or new machines or new plants. That, those are the kinds of, of, of mechanisms that the Chancellor's looking at there. And you talked about long-term decisions, and that's important, isn't it? Because you know, it's very easy to criticise politicians of all colours uh, for short-term decisions, mm -hmm. election cycles, things that will get them into office in the next election period. What the Chancellor has said today is that these are long-term decisions. Uh, he's made that tax uh, change permanent. Labour has said they would support it if they were in number 10. Um, and it's about that certainty, isn't it, for business, about knowing what's coming around the corner and making longer-term decisions. Because, as you said, they won't pay off in a few months from now. These are decisions that will pay off a lot later down the line. That's right. And if you look at corporate tax policy, but all, all of our tax policy, actually, for the last few years, but really for as long as anyone can remember, it's been beset by constant tinkering and constant changes. And to, to be honest, we did get a bit more of that today with more changes. And what businesses are looking for, as much as um, you know, more generous taxes, is a certain tax environment so they know how to invest. And actually, lots of findings suggest that actually having good certainty is as important. I think, again, it's important to say that's being provided for the private sector, but the public sector isn't getting that. And we have all of the, the announcements from the Chancellor today really based on a set of incredibly tight spending plans beyond the next election, for which there are currently no departmental budgets set. No one really thinks those are particularly deliverable. The, the budgets announced back in March were, were pretty tight. Yeah. We've had extra inflation and no extra money put in. So I, again, I think that the challenge for the Chancellor is, is can we provide that certainty and, and you know, the, the necessary conditions to succeed in the public sector as well as private? And what a lot of businesses are already saying today as well is there was nothing in this about infrastructure. And they know that that is one of their biggest bugbears. It's about trains and roads and facilities to get things around the country, investment in fast internet, that sort of thing. 
nothing in the autumn statement about that, was it? No, and that's right. And if you look at those plans that I mentioned that are penciled in beyond the next election, for day-to-day -day spending, so that's on things like you know paying public sector workers, the plans are pretty tight. Mm. For capital spending, investment, the plans are even tighter. They imply after account for inflation, really big falls in, in real terms. And that, that's going to be really hard within that kind of budget to be making the big investment, whether it be in road and rail, whether it be in R&D, whether it be in public sector estates. You know, we know we've got large maintenance backlogs in, in hospitals and schools, for example. Oh, there will be lots of competing demands on what at the moment looks like a very tight budget on the capital side. Yes, uh, we'll watch this space and see whether we'll get any further details ahead of possibly a general election next year. Thomas, really good to have you with us. Thanks very much. Thomas Pope there, Deputy Chief Economist at the Institute for Government.